Travels from the Voice of Victory podcast. I'm glad you tuned in tonight. <clears throat> I just uh, just got in a few minutes ago from the fair here in Port Charlotte, and uh, we've seen 37 people come to know Christ thus far at this fair. I left there, and Brother David had five young people sitting around and he was telling them about Jesus. And so I'm praying that they'll get saved and come to the Lord tonight. I'll hear more about that later this evening. Nothing better than seeing people get saved and coming to Jesus Christ. I don't know of any greater thing that we can see and be a part of than witnessing and telling someone about the joy that is found in Jesus Christ. So tonight I want you to really pray for those five people that they'll get saved. Before we begin tonight, I have done, I guess you probably know, I've done several books and I've made several uh, CDs when it comes to singing and stuff like that. So tonight I'm going to bring, I'm going to put one of those songs on here and let you hear it. I hope it's a blessing to you. I hope you enjoyed that song, Touch Me. What a blessing, my friends. What a blessing. I've been doing gospel music for many years. I don't claim to be a great gospel singer, but I just do the best I can. I hope you enjoyed that song tonight. Looking tonight into James chapter 1, 
verses 19 to 27. Before we get started, I want us to remember a few people in prayer. Let's remember Martha in prayer up at uh, Liberty Baptist Church. That's Pastor Gary Jackson's wife. I want you to remember her in prayer, please. Also uh, remember in prayer um, Patty uh, Pyle. She's uh, one of our workers, and she's got the gout. And just pray for her that she'll be okay, because she really does love getting out and witnessing and being a blessing to so many people. And then also pray uh, for uh, my sister-in-law, Bonnie. She's still trying to get over whatever she had in the flu, and I appreciate you praying for her. And I've got some things coming up in the near future that I'm going to ask you to pray about. Uh, just uh, minor things, but yet they are major in some ways and minor in others. So just keep me in prayer as we go through these uh, things that we're going to be going through in the next uh, next couple of weeks. Also pray about the fair. They will see a harvest of souls saved. Because that's what this is all about, is getting people saved. I'll try to put some things on the internet about what's taking place out there over the next week. And I hope that you'll uh, get a blessing from them. Getting in now to the word of God. Wherefore, my beloved, brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness, superfluity, and naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving ourselves. For if any, if, if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For, be, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, that man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Father, bless tonight in our Bible study. I pray it will be a blessing to all those that listen and if, Father, it is one that's listening, it's never trusted in you as Lord and Savior, I pray tonight they will turn their life over to you, repent of their sin, and be born into the family of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We know that uh, one of the hardest things in the world is withstanding trials and temptations. Each one of us go through all these different things. This is a great passage of scripture, a very descriptive passage. And in those uncertain terms, there are several preparations that must be made in order to overcome temptation. And without these preparations, temptation can never be conquered. These, there are four preparations I want to talk to you about tonight. Preparation number one is to be quick to hear the word of God. Preparation number two is be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Preparation number three is bridle and control the tongue. And preparation number four is to visit the needy and keep yourself unspotted from the world. Let's look at verses 19 to 21 as we look at the first one. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak, slow to wrath, and for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness, superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with 
meekness, the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. This is preparation number one, and that of we are to be quick to hear the word of God. Be quick to hear the word of God is important. The thrust of these three verses is seen in James chapter 1, verse 24, 21. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superficiality of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Receive the word so that a person's soul will be saved. The greatest temptation in the world is for a person to walk through life doing what he wants and pleases, and thereby, thereby ignoring and neglecting and rejecting God. The result of this is found in 1, first chapter 5, 1, verse 15. Then when lust hath conceived and bringeth forth sin, and sin, when is finished, bringeth forth death. Therefore, if a person is to be saved, if he is to be delivered from the great temptations that will doom his soul, he must prepare himself. He must be quick to hear the word of God. He must make sure that he hears the word of God. How can a person make sure that he hears the word of God? Make sure that he can receive the word of God and save his soul. This passage says that he has to do five things. Let's consider all five things. First of all, he must be slow to speak. This means that a person must be willing to listen instead of speaking his own ideas about right and wrong, about how a person is saved. He must sit and listen instead of uh, hanging on to his own ideas. He must be willing to listen to God's word instead of insisting upon what he thinks. Number two, he must be slow to wrath or anger. This means at least two things. One, a person must not react against what God says about temptation and sin, nor about what God says about salvation. If a person reacts against God's plan of salvation and follows his own plan, He's dooming himself. No person can ever be saved or conquer temptation unless he rea if he reacts in anger against God's word of salvation and righteousness. I've heard people tell me, well, God didn't do this and God didn't do that and I'm not going to trust him anymore. That's wrong. A person must not become angry and act against others in wrath. Anger and wrath disturb and distract. An angry person cannot focus his or her thoughts and spirits upon God's word, not enough to hear what the word is saying. An angry person just cannot do what God says. He cannot live righteously or receive the righteousness of God's salvation. James 1.20 says, For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Now number three, he must put aside all filthiness. The picture is that of taking off a dirty garment and putting it aside. A person must put off every dirty thing and lay it off to the side away from himself. If he enjoys the dirt and filth, then his mind is going to be on it. His mind will not be clear, not enough to hear the word of God. William Barclay makes the point that the Greek word for filthiness is taken from the Greek word rupus. The word is sometimes used to refer to wax in the ear. The picture is, is descriptive. A person with wax in the ear cannot hear the word of God, at least not clearly. Therefore, he must take the wax out of his ear and put it away or else he will be deaf to the word of God. Number four, 
He must put aside all that remains of naughtiness and wickedness and evil. The idea is this. Even after putting aside all filthiness, there, still, there, still, there will still be some naughtiness or wickedness that will show up within us. Therefore, my friends, we must be alert to these uprisings and put them off and lay them aside as well. We must be completely clean and pure from all dirt and naughtiness in order to hear the Word of God. The Word of God is not going to go into a dirty mind. It goes into a convicted mind that loves God. We must receive the word of God with meekness, is number five. We must be as a child before God, our Father, that is, to sit before him meekly, just as a child does his father. The idea is that we must be humble, we must be gentle, and we have to be quiet and attentive and listen to the word of God. We must sit and listen with an open heart, ready to hear exactly what our Father says. The person who sits, the person who sits before God, like this, discovers a most wonderful thing. I want you to notice the word engrafted there. It means to implant, to be born within. When a person listens and hears the word of God. It is planted within his heart and life. What God says is actually born within his heart and the man hears exactly what God says. The word of God is born within the heart and life and the person's soul is saved. He conquers and triumphs over all temptation including the terrible temptations of rejecting God and doing his own thing and living like he wants. He is saved to live eternally with God. This is the first preparation that a person must make. Withstanding temptation, he must be quick to hear the word of God. But, but he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundredfold and some sixty and some thirty. Matthew chapter 13, verse 23. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Luke chapter 10, verse 39. Then they which godly received his word were baptized, in the same day, they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Acts chapter 2, verse 41. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Because when, when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not in the world of men, but as it is in the truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 13. Wherefore, my beloved, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak and slow to wrath. James 1, 19. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. Proverbs chapter 15, 31. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they consider not that they do evil. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse number 1. Our second point is talking about preparation number two, to do the word of God, to do not as a hearer only. Contrary to what most people think, it's not enough to hear and know the word of God. We must live and do the word of God. We must 
make it a very much a part of our life every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Notice in verses 22, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like unto a man beholding his natural face, his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not forgetful, heareth, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. Preparation, number two, and that's the word of God to do, do not be just a hearer only. Contrary to what most people think, it's not enough to hear and know the word of God. The person who only hears and knows the word deceives himself. If a person thinks that he can hear and learn the word of God and then go out and live like he wants, he deceives himself. There are many who sit under the word of God week after week and they learn and know as much of the word as anyone. They think they're listening and learning and, make them, and makes them acceptable to God. That it makes them safe and secure. When they slip into sin, they feel that they can ask God for forgiveness and that he will forgive them. They just feel that God would never reject them. But I want you to note something, my friends. The most critical fact, God does not accept us because we hear and know the word, nor because we confess our sins. Each of these are necessary and very important, but they're not enough. God accepts us because we confess and repent. Repentance means that we turn away from our sin and we turn to God. God accepts us because we turn to him and live for him. When we believe God, really, and I mean really believe him, then it is that we trust and follow him and do exactly what he says. The person who only hears and knows the word soon forgets what he's heard. If a person does not practice what he or she learns, it soon fades from memory. It's just forgotten. It never becomes a part of the person's life. He is like the person who looks in a mirror to see if he needs to do anything to his appearance, then walks away and thinks of something else and forgetting the pimple and rustle hair and need to be cared for. How much like what happens so often? We hear the word and are convinced of some defect, some shortcoming, some failure that we need to clean up. But as soon as we walk out from under the word, we are distracted by the world and its affairs. And we soon forget to do what the word of God has told us to do. The person who hears and does the word of God is blessed. Note this, that the word of God is called a perfect law of liberty. This means that the word of God will set a person free from bondage of sin and death. The word of God will free a person from all the temptations of this life and give him the full and victorious life for which his soul longs. A life that is willing to continue on in eternity with God. A person who does and lives the word of God will find that he or she is freed from all that enslaves his soul upon earth. He will discover love and joy and peace, a soul that just soars with a sense of freedom and liberty, with a sense of joy 
and rejoicing with a real sense of purpose and meaning. And then, of course, a sense of assurance and confidence, a sense of security and safety, a, a safety and victory over temptation, a sense of life over death, and my friends, most of all, a sense of deliverance from sin. The Word of God is the law of liberty, the law that sets man free to know and fellowship with God forever and ever. But I want you to note a critical point. We must continue in the Word of God. We must continue to live just like it says. If we do not, then we shall be, then shall we, then we shall be blessed. Abundantly and eternally and happy and very, very happy. For where, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same as my brother and sister and mother. Matthew chapter 12, verse number 50. And why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me, and heareth my sayings, and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and digged a deep and laid digged it deep and laid a foundation on rock. And when the floods arose, the stream beat vehemently upon the house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built in a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and, ru and the ruin in the house was great. Luke chapter 6 verses 46 to 49. Number 3 tonight, verse 26. Notice what it says. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. We see here that Preparation number three is bridling and controlling the tongue. This is one of the hardest things that many people have is to be able to bridle their tongue, to be able to uh, sometimes just sit still and not say anything at all, just watch what they say. Bridling and controlling your tongue is so important. If a man or a person thinks that he is religious, that is acceptable to God and he does not bridle his tongue, he really deceives himself. No matter what he thinks or professes, his religion is empty. And I want you to notice the word religious here. That word is thikos, in that of religion. It describes a person who is very religious, who gives great attention to religion. The general epistle of James and the Tyndale New Testament commentary says, the person is actively religious, very faithful in his religious worship and service, but he has a loose tongue, a loose tongue, interrupting and dominating the conversation, being easily provoked and lashing out at others, gossiping and telling tales, criticizing and murmuring, judging and condemning others, using slang and cursing, engaging in suggestion and off-color talk, talking about running down others. A state of no matter what a person thinks, no matter how religious he is, if that person cannot bridle his or her tongue, he deceives himself or herself. His religion is empty he does not please God and is thereby unacceptable to God. For a person to withstand and conquer temptation, he must and she must bridle their tongue. This is the third preparation necessary to conquer temptation. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. 
Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Put then them in mind to be subject to principalities and to powers and to obey magistrates, to be ready for any good work, to speak evil to no man, to be no brawler, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. Titus chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking gutter or guile. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth the soul from troubles. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 23. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. James chapter 1, verse 26. Now, number four tonight, in that of the preparation, is the practice of pure religion. Look at verse 27. Pure religion, an undefiled, an undefiled God, and the Father is to visit the fatherless, the widows, and their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Preparation four, practicing a pure religion. How do we do that? By visiting the needy and by keeping ourselves unspotted from the world. Two things are said that are necessary in this pre preparation. One, a person must visit the fatherless and widows and their affliction. This certainly would apply to visiting all who have need within the community. Those who were orphaned, newcomers, widows, a widower, lost or unsaved, shut-ins, bedridden, lonely, fatherless or motherless, and then finally grieved. This is the job of that person, that fourth characteristic. Whatever the need, God expects us to visit them. He expects, uh, he expects us to reach all within our community. And the task is not really all that is difficult, not in a contrary way, where the church is practically every community. Just think of a church within a community being surrounded by rows of houses. The ministry and the members can easily visit every home by simply setting up several visitation hours and simply going from house to house. As they go, all they have to do is share that they are visiting for Christ in the church to see if they can be of any help to the family. Letting the community know that one really cares will cause many to call upon the believers and the church when the hour of crisis strikes. And it will strike, for it strikes us all. In addition to this, every church should, of course, have a core of genuine believers who can share Christ with the lost. I want you to notice something. Pure religion is undefiled before God and the Father, this to be, and the Father to visit. Notice something here in verse 27. And when ye come into a house, salute it. And if the house be, un, be worthy, if the house be worthy, let the peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. Matthew chapter 10, verse 12 and 14. And whosoever, and whosoever, and whatsoever house ye enter into, there abide, and thence depart, and whomsoever shall, uh, and whomsoever will not receive you, when ye go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet, for a testimony against them. Luke chapter nine verses four and five. Over and over we see scriptures that tell us what we need to do. A person must keep himself unspotted from the world. Pure religion does not become corrupted with false beliefs or with false religion. It holds to the purity 
of the gospel and to the word of God. It focuses upon the power of God and changes lives eternally and reaches out to change people's lives by visiting them. Pure religion does not become morally corrupt. It does not become entangled with the affairs and pleasures of this world. True religion stirs people to separate themselves from the things of this world that arouse their fleshly desires and cravings. True believers of true religion keep themselves unspotted from the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life and all this world. This is necessary, my friends, in preparing if a person is to conquer temptation and sins in his or her life. Now, we commend you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourself from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which he has received from us. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse number 6. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of this world. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her. Be clean and bear the vessels of the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful weak works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 11. There's no doubt that God has given us some instruction here on how to withstand trials and temptations. We need to be, number one, quick to hear the word of God. Number two, we need to be a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. And number three, we need to bridle and control our tongues. That means we have to take charge of ourselves because our tongue gets us in trouble. And number four, we need to visit the needy and we need to keep ourselves unspotted before the world. This is important, friends, that we try to live as holy of life as we can. Remember now, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But God expects us to be holy. He says, be holy as I am holy. James makes it very clear about this matter of temptation and trials. If there's anything we can learn from the word of God is that it is controllable. We can handle it through the word of God and through our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Tonight, my friends, I pray that I've helped you to take a stronger stand when it comes to that of trials and temptations and that you will lean on the Lord Jesus Christ and remember that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Father, thank you for these that have tuned in tonight and I pray God this message has touched the hearts of people and that their lives will be changed because of not what Dave Smelt said, but because of what God's word has said and the meaning and all of the interpretation that is there. May it honor and glorify you in Jesus' name, amen. God loves you, friends. I love you. Glad you tuned in tonight. I hope I've helped you. Draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. Keep a smile on your face, a song in your heart, and go and tell someone about Jesus today, for he loves you. God bless you. And amen.